Welcome to another video blog by The Counseling Geek, a blog helping you, the professional educator, develop technical and 21st century skills. Hey guys, it's Jeff, The Counseling Geek. I'm here today with another tutorial and an overview of another tech tool that I hope to be able to share with you and, and that might be useful to you in your counseling profession. Today we're going to be talking about Lucid Chart which is basically a mind mapping or you know organizational kind of diagramming chart. It's a tool on its own, but it's also embedded directly in Google Drive. So we'll be working ma mainly within our Google Drive account, and if you haven't had those, um, if you don't have a Google Drive account, I highly encourage you to sign up for one. Google is one of the best platforms out there. Uh, if you're on Yahoo or Hotmail or any other thing like that, Gmail and the Google kind of platform is kind of the most progressive service that's available. Um, you know, I know there's a few concerns, but anyways, if you guys don't have one, I hi highly encourage you to get one. But for today, we're going to be hopping on to uh, Google Drive and to access Lucidchart and kind of just an, a, a two minute overview. Uh, and and that, that way, in case you want to jump in on your own, don't necessarily want to sit through a tutorial, um, is essentially a tool that you can use that gives you a, a, a diagramming um, visualization tool that I feel like is most used in kind of engineering or business worlds in terms of like if then diagrams and, and you know um, you don't really see these types of uh, software tools within the educational world however for our purposes or at least the purposes I've been able to use it with and by no means have I di you know used this to its full potential yet um, but I couldn't hold it back from sharing with you guys um, it's, ma it's mainly kind of a, a flow chart, essentially, that we can use to show processes, um, systems that we have in place in a visual manner. So I'll show you some, some samples that I have created for my own counseling program towards the end of this. But in order to access Lucidchart, you log into your Google Drive account, as I have here, and then you go to the Create button. And on the Create button, there's a, a button called Lucidchart. If for some reason that button is not on there when you click create, you need to go down here to the connect more apps and you can find the Lucid chart. One thing I will also add before we kind of dive in is that there is a, uh, it's, it's free to use. Um, it does have some limitations, but you're able to sign up for an educator account, which removes a large portion of those limitations for free. Uh, you just have to verify your address or, or your email address at a school and then maybe a few other things um, and then it's basically a free license for educators to use. So that's another great resource. So click on that it'll open up a new window uh, within the Lucidchart app actually. So it's, you're kind of leaving your Google Drive account and hopping into this Lucidchart. And as soon as it loads up I'll show you kind of the formatting and where you can find different things. Give it just one more second. I think my computer's sinking really, really hard. So let's give it a, give it a title. And as you can see, you have a free account. Basically, you know, this will open up. It gives you full access the first couple, you know, 60 days it looks like or something. Um, just click not now, and then again you can go through and access the educational. Um, license but essentially when we are looking on here we end up with a blank kind of canvas and you know for those of you that are just wanting to stick around let me show you kind of what I built uh, a few different things especially at the high school level in terms of scheduling so within um, my high school I built kind of a progression for our electives and our career technical ed path you know classes and you know you can look here and see Kind of a visual progression that classes have taken with the culminating class at our local community college for those that are looking into pursuing that so you know that's all well and good and i and i'll show you how to do a little bit of this but essentially when it looks like at the end and this is not a very great rendering it was scanned through my copier but this is what it ends up like you know print printable on a you know a white paper that you know ends up looking very professional but also uh, easy to follow for people that maybe don't work in education that want to see what class I take next. I've, I've done a few of the things with you know our English progression, our um, different things like that. So 
you know, if you're sticking around, that's a good five minute overview. I encourage you to, to check it out. If you want to stick, stick with me for another, you know, five minutes or so, I'm going to show you guys how to actually build this and give you a few tips that I've um, thought of when I have been working through Lucid Chart. So essentially when we get in here, um, we open up a brand new blank canvas. And just like with a presentation or any other project we're working on, it's really, really important, especially for this, that we have kind of the grand scheme and you know we will be building progressions, but also knowing where we're going with it to a certain extent, because that determines how we place things on the canvas. So we don't wanna you know make something super big and then run out of space. We could you know hypothetically expand this, the canvas, but if we're working to fit on a certain pa you know paper type or that kind of thing, we kind of want to know our space requirements and also what our goal is with this project. So when we are looking at this, if we wanted to add, say for example, there are all these buttons over here are things that you can drag. So if I wanted to drag some text over and make a title, I can easily do that. And then as soon as I double click on it, I can say, see how cool this is. With an exclamation mark. And so with this, just like with any Word document or um, writing utensil or anything like that, you can increase the, the size, you can change the font, you can bold it, strike it out, any, any of kind of the general word processing tools you can use within this software. Okay, so that's, that's all well and good. There's nothing super fancy there. Um, one thing that you might have noticed that I will mention is that it does provide handy dandy little uh, guides that when you hit a center line or once we get some more objects on here, you know, if we want to keep things centered and aligned and that kind of thing, it gives us automatic guides that it'll snap to as we're going through. So that's that. You know, you can add shapes, um, just a general shape, shading, that kind of thing. Um, but essentially, these are where it gets most powerful. And there's a lot of really specific details about a lot of these shapes um, that kind of don't really matter to us. They're more of kind of the flow and design process for other industries. Um, but essentially we use the shapes to kind of delineate what different things mean. And one of the things that I like to do is just pick a shape that I'm going to use for, you know, say I want to work on, you know, I'll say this is a blog. So idea and then another shape to, to delineate another, uh, you know, thought process, writing process, spell another shape publishing and usually guys with this like this is something that happens if it doesn't fit you either need to change the shape of your circle by moving around things like that or you can actually change the shape of the text and then finally, um, you know, you see how these lines are now lining up and snapping. Um, I've never even seen this one, so it looks like we can link. Interesting. Oh, I see that. Um, so I'm, I'm learning stuff as I go too. So follow up. All right, so we got some stuff on here, and we could keep going. We can get as nuts as we want. Uh, you can do things like if you wanted to change the color, this fill button, you can go in here and make it, you know, a color progression. If you want to show like sequential years or, you know, steps in a process, sometimes going from a light to a dark color is good or using the same color for all the same information, but changing the hue of that color can show some separation, but also keeping users eyes kind of following the steps. Um, another great thing that you're able to do, uh, where is my line button? So if you, actually you don't even need a button, forgot. Uh, so if you hop on here and, and you get some stuff on here, what's nice is you can actually add lines that show users where they're going. And the nice thing about it is these little red buttons are little snaps that you can go to and this little kind of uh, solid black uh, plus sign indicates that you're ready to make a line. And so if I wanted to connect these two processes, I'll click and drag to any one of these. So I can drag up here, I can drag down here, or basically any part of this shape, uh, it automatically snaps. 
and then it creates a line. Same thing with this, if I wanted to go here, and then if I wanted to go here, and obviously if it's a little bit short, it's not going to show up very well, so you might have to be careful with your spacing. Um, but then if you click on this, you can also adjust the different line types. So if I wanted to say, you know, solid point arrow, not, you know, if you want to get specific, you can also change if it's a straight line or curves, or if it kind of steps up in case you want to keep it, uh, kind of have a follow up process. Lastly, the thing that you guys can do, you can, you can save all of these things to PDF, you can save them to, I believe, a Word document, you can share, you can also do this collaboratively. So if you're using Google Docs with colleagues or students, uh, you can use this tool together. So you can actually invite people to, to make this and follow along and you guys can both be on the same um, kind of lucid chart together. So it's really, really handy. And you know, as you're building this, I encourage you to just play around with it. That's how I got started with this thing. I just saw this in the Google Apps Drive kind of uh, where I can connect more things and decided I'm gonna try this thing. And then I actually found a project that would be useful for my school and I did it. And yeah, it took a little bit of time and a little bit of practice. Um, and it takes kind of a little bit of a design eye when you're building these things. Um, you know, but with enough effort and practice, you're able to be successful and produce, you know, typically high quality materials that will allow people to fully understand kind of what you are presenting to them or providing a different way to get that information across in a visual manner that also gives information without writing it out in like a paragraph or a huge presentation. Um, so I encourage you to hop on here, try this thing out. Uh, Give me some comments or I'd look, look forward to seeing emails or anything like that if you guys have done something with this or have other ideas to use this for. Um, or if you just want to show me your finished product. I love seeing what people are building and uh, it's inspiring to me and it's, you know, I'm, I'm able to hopefully inspire some other people with some of the other things that uh, some of the readers or other counselors are doing um, across the United States around the world. Please, if you have any questions, shoot me an email, uh, hit me up on Twitter or anything like that. Thank you for watching and uh, good luck on your Lucid Chart projects. See ya. Thank you for stopping by. Come back soon. Comments and questions are always welcome. You can connect with the Counseling Geek via Facebook by following at Counseling Geek on Twitter, adding me to your circles on Google Plus, or writing to me via email.